Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. I'm super excited to talk about an older school technology today, something called key value observers. You'll find these in a lot of older projects, but it's a really handy communication pattern, especially if you work in extensively in UIKit. So in this episode, we're gonna take a look at an example of what key value observing is, how it works, and how it's a little bit different from some of the other communication patterns you may have used out there. Okay, let's jump in. KVO is observing the state of a property on an object and then be notified when that state changes. Take this view controller, for example. Say I want to update its view when the state of the weather changes in a weather surface. I can do that by observing the weather object, letting UIKit notify me when it changes, and then we're free to update the UI. The advantage of this communication pattern is it's heavily built into UIKit, and most Objective-C UIKit properties are observable. That makes communication between views and models really easy. The only downside of KVO is it is strictly Objective-C based, meaning you have to modify your code and make use of certain keywords to make KVO work in Swift. Let's take a look at a very simple example. Paul Hudson of Hacking and Swift has a really nice example that shows how all this works. Say we have a person called Taylor Swift and we want to be observed when the state of name changes in person. We can do that by making the name here observable by putting Objective-C dynamic var in front of this. And then we can observe it by instantiating the person object and through the key value pair mechanism, register for changes. Now when we change the state of the person, say to someone like Justin Bieber, we will get notified via the key value observer communication pattern and be told when that changes. Now there's a couple things going on here. First of all, look at how much decorating we need to do. KVO only works with Objective-C runtime, so this needs to be class. The way we mark that up in Swift is by putting the Objective-C attribute in front of class, and we also need this dynamic var. This word dynamic's really interesting. Dynamic is what bridges Objective-C into the Swift world. It's really about interoperability. It triggers something called dynamic dispatch, which is only available in Objective-C, and that's what enables KVO to use the Objective-C runtime instead of the Swift, which doesn't know anything about KVO or dynamic dispatch. So really the key here is to go Objective-C dynamic on the property we want to observe and then observe it like this. Let's take a look at an example on an application. So say I have a weather service with a weather object and I want to observe that and be notified when weather changes so that I can update the UI on my view controller. This is how it would work. So here I am in my KVO view controller. And the first thing I need to do is observe the weather. So I can define a observable weather here, which is something I'm going to observe in my weather service object. So here I first of all make the property I want to observe Objective-C dynamic. That makes it available to KVO. In this case, I want to observe the weather. Then once I've made it observable, I can observe it. So in my view controller, here's really the mechanic of how we go to our weather service, we go observe, and here we do our key value observer. Here's the key, I want to observe the weather object, and when that happens, here's what's gonna get called when that changes. I'm gonna get a new weather value service. I can then use that however I like in my view controller. In this case, I would like to update my view with the new weather service value, and that will then go ahead and update the UI. So just going into it like this, key value observing. I'm gonna fetch it, I'm gonna get it, and it's gonna update. Now let's quickly walk through the changes I needed to make in this code to make this all work. First of all, the property must be representable in Objective-C. So what that means, unfortunately, is that if you wanna use KVO, you can't use Swift's structs or enums. They're not representable in Objective-C runtime. So everything you see here is a class marked up with this Objective-C attribute. That's the first thing to note. Secondly, note here how there is no mechanic like protocol delegate or closure. Here we're directly observing it. So we can just take this property, observe it directly in our view controller, and that's the entire communication mechanism. It's really nice and simple. And thirdly, the other big thing to note with this is that we were able to observe the weather property outside of its declaration. That's really handy, and that's a big difference between this and property observers in Swift, where we have will set and did set, where here if we wanted to observe how that worked, 
we would have to do that right in the declaration. So for example, here is another example of property observer. Now this one's purely in Swift. Here, if we define a weather object, we can be notified via property observers when the weather changes via its will set or did set. So this is the exact same code, only here when the button is pressed and we're getting notified about the weather changing, we can update the view here, but we have to declare all of that within the view controller itself. In other words, we can't do this outside of the weather service, we have to do it in place. That's just one subtle difference between KVO and property observers in Swift. Okay, so what are some of the advantages of the KVO? Well, first of all, this is a tried and true technology. It's super mature, it's well proven, and it's built right into Apple's API via UIKit. Everything in there is just about observable. So it's really nice, natively built in structure, really, really nice, well tested and mature. The cons? It's just not very Swifty. You can't make use of Swift structs and enums. You can really feel the boilerplate you have to bring in to bridge these two worlds between Objective-C and Swift. And Swift alternatives like closures and property observers, they're just more elegant and they, they fit the modern Swift architectures a little bit better. So in terms of recommendations, I really think it's good to know KVO. If you're coming across any existing or legacy applications, they may use it heavily within their architectures, but I wouldn't reach for it first. I would start with either a closure, a protocol delegate, or just rely on property observers in Swift themselves and see if you could do your notifications that way. Okay, well that's a really simple, quick explanation of what KVO is. I do recommend you try these out for yourself and you really feel the weight of the Objective-C runtime and what it's like to use that in your projects. But go ahead and build one, try it out, have that in your, your back pocket in case you ever need to reach for it. Okay, good luck, happy programming, all source code is available, and we'll see you next time. Okay, take care, bye-bye.